Kristen, it's been so long since we've done a pod. Do you remember how to do this? Do you think we still have an audience? <laughs> like, how long has it been? Is it two weeks? <laughs> it feels like a two long and a half. time. I think it's been two and a half because we were going to do one after MLP, and then we didn't, and then we played another MLP, and now it's, what, Tuesday? Crazy. Um, so let's get into it. This pickleball life. It's pod 49. And pickleball's going world wide. Yeah, it's sort of a rhyme. We're going to go with it. I was going to say, does that rhyme? I originally wrote, you know, pod 49 feeling fine, but I thought I would, uh, I, I would link it to our subject matter. And I'm excited about the globalization of the game. What can I say? You know, coming on the heels of the Olympics. Are they over now? Yeah. Yesterday they were over. Amazing. I uh, think I watched in total maybe 20 minutes of Olympics. What you just watched breakdancing over and over and over, be honest. Hey, you, can't, you can't avoid it. I mean, you heard it here first. We broke the breaking. Uh, what was that? In February that yeah. breakdancing was coming to the Olympics. Um, but uh, yeah, you you folks heard it here and you were not surprised to see uh, the, the breaking memes all over your Instagram. Love it. My favorite's like the cat rolling around impersonating the Australian <laughs> break dancer. And we will definitely put a clip of that in the Pretty this sure podcast. she's from New Zealand. Sorry, New Zealand. I thought she was from Australia too because she was wearing the, the golden green, but yeah. the caption said New Zealand. So either they're wrong and I'm now misreporting their fake news or. So we love meeting pod listeners. It's Definitely one of our favorite things. Huge shout out to Cora, who said hi at MLP Kansas. And wow, we, oh, good memory. That's like way down in the notes. That was coming up. <laughs> and pop so that right in, Cora. One way you could say hi to us is at the Gamma Classic, September 12th yeah, through that's 15th. Right. We are going to be in Pittsburgh. I got to book those tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Registration ends August 31st. And Kristen is going to choose... A pod listener, a male and a female, or just one? Are you going to play two hey, events? I am taking applications, and I will play both if if it feels right. All right, so two pod listeners are going to be your partner. You're going to choose if you want me. I know for uh, the Gamma Classic, I'm a, I'm a heavy load. What's I'm your a very duper? positive What's partner? Your duper? My duper, I believe, is still 4.09 aspirationally, 4.5. Um, here are the requirements. I, uh, Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to know. Giggles, mandatory after every point. Okay. Must love cats. Mm-hmm. Vocal prowess or a musical inclination, not mandatory, but a huge plus. <laughs> <laughs> if that's you, pod listener, you are in. <laughs> Email thispblife at gmail.com or comment in YouTube. Um, yeah. Should we substitute the theme song this week with my new song? Yeah. Oh my gosh, we should totally do that. <laughs> All right. And don't forget, we still have mm -hmm. how many more uh, days? I think only two more the, weeks. Till the Jilly B25 25% off code expires. For Gamma. Yeah, that's right. I have a Jilly B25% right? off code. It's a Jilly B25. I have it for about two more weeks. So if you have not tried the Airbender or the Obsidian Paddle yet, I highly recommend it. Um, I have had so many pod listeners reach out saying they bought the Airbender 16 and are loving it. And it's a great all court paddle is what they're saying. It hits hard enough for them to feel like they have yeah. a power paddle, but they have that control and that ability to reset from the mid court. And I just, I love that notion of like an all court paddle. You know, um, how, when you see like a kid who you don't see all the time and you are like, oh my God, they've gotten so much taller. And the parents are like, oh, yeah, I see him every day. I didn't realize, you know, that it happened. Well, that happened to me with my airbender that I played pickleball with someone for the first time in a while. And they were like, never get rid of that paddle. Oh. That paddle looks so good on you. Oh, because you hadn't seen them in a while. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. They were like, that is your wand. Okay, so this is really cool. Josh from North Carolina just wrote me and said, uh, 
I sent him a text and said, hey, what did you think of the Airbender 16? He said, you're a mind reader. I was just going to text you. One of the most solid, quick hands, best feeling paddles I've played with. It will likely be my new number one. My Hesachor Carbon comes tonight. I'm going to try it with that in my 6 a.m. group tomorrow. I think all it needs is the lightest weight shock buster in the top of the throat. Sorry for the novel. <laughs> would, love, would love to see it in a Kevlar face at some point. Ooh, nice. Yeah, Kevlar right. is coming, baby. Thanks Kevlar for the feedback, Josh. Coming. Awesome. And I, I didn't even read that till just now. Uh, I, didn't well, know what it, so I didn't know what it was going to say, if it was yeah, going to be was positive like, or what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tried your paddle. What are you smoking? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, we also have a, a giveaway. Uh, head over to Instagram to enter the Mizuno shoe giveaway. Check these puppies out and get a good look because this is the last look you're going to get because those are going on court and those are going on court immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but I am actually really excited and this is for, for the breaker one, blue color. One male, one female will win. Correct. And um, head to Instagram, one of my latest posts. You'll be able to enter and US only. Yes. And the contest runs until Sunday the 18th. So get in on the action on Instagram. This is a one year anniversary of the player arms race. That's right at PPA Kansas last August, last year, Steve Kuhn and Connor Pardo went to war over players, driving up player salaries and players chose their alliances. They chose their side. So looking back one year later, I thought it was so cool. Zane Navratil did a post that was like, is pickleball in a better place? You tell me. Yeah, I know. And it's funny because I put that in the pod notes like a week before I saw that post. And I was like, yeah, I was thinking that. Do you that. think I was Zane thinking hacked our iCloud? <laughs> probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, totally. But I, th I think I and probably Zane uh, synonymize the uh, – Is that a word? I think it is a word. If it's not, But if it's not, be. I don't care. That's a <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Kansas event – and the player arms race. And I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, there's like the Gettysburg Address and like and the Battle of 1812. And like with? we have these historical like titles. Mm -hmm. There needs to be like a better title mm -hmm. for the player arms race. Like player arms race doesn't do it for me. Mm -hmm. I want Civil like War the, the bloodbath of, of Kansas City. or <laughs> The bloodbath of Kansas City. That time Connor Pardo got ear cancer from all the EMF going through the phone calls he had to take all weekend. So are we in a better place? I mean, you could argue that players are making more money and the fans get to see more of the best players in the same venue. But on the flip side, you have people who are indentured servants and who mm. are not necessarily incentivized to try hard. Mm -hmm. The and creation of more of like an exhibition it. tour. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know what their plan was originally. I feel like when we were going through it, it was like, here's your base salary. And then you're going to make more if you play well. Mm. I always got that impression, but I may have just assumed that mm -hmm. no one would be so silly as to pay you all your money up front. Mm. What did you think was going to happen? Well, not up front, but monthly or quarterly. Right. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought that there was also supposed to be some quarterly performance bonuses, and I don't know if those have been those have been paid out. But it is interesting on the heels of Colin Johns writing this letter that he didn't realize would kind of be recirculated. Um, yeah, I think the common his, un understanding now is it was like a compilation of text yes. messages he sent yeah. turned into to prose. This, this letter turned into prose. And airing his grievances, and it's like a lot of people and a lot of other podcasts turned around and aired their grievances with him, mm -hmm. saying you're a tank. And you and your brother tank matches. And that's not fun to watch. And so on the heels of you just articulating like, yeah, you know, does does this salaried format create an incentive to essentially not care as much? I don't know. I'm asking I'm asking the question. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's you no know, question. Obviously, you know what Tom Webb thinks, who was on our podcast, you know, four podcasts ago saying they're, uh, you know, Globe that's trotters. the Harlem Globetrotter tour. Right. I, I don't know if I believe that. Yeah. Well, I think there are some people, um, and I'm quoting Travis Rettenmeyer here, mm -hmm. that – 
just have it in their DNA or their being yeah. to try 120%. Yeah, exactly. And they just they just can't turn it off. Like that's just who they are. They always want to be their best and try their they hardest. They want to win a staring they contest. not do that. And you and Travis are obviously that type of person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, someone made the argument once that I can't remember who this was. Maybe you do. That Ben gets better because he has more reps on championship Sunday than anyone. Mm. And here's the guy who like is constantly playing the most matches now being quote unquote forced to play MLP. Mm-hmm. He he's doing the the most to begin with plus. Right. And so by proxy that ends up being Colin too. I wonder if there's, there's some effect of that. It's like, yeah, you go, you know, take, Two thirds of the field, they're losing in the first three rounds. Yeah, so they are technically like day by day playing fewer. Well, matches, that's why. That's why they love the progressive draws, which is also why. I th- on the flip side, I think the other players loved MLP because it was like everybody kind of has the chance to play as many matches as yeah. as each other. And now here we are in this position where everyone's kind of playing more than they want to be. So I don't think we really answered the question in terms of is pickleball in a better place? It's just in a different place. Yeah, and I think. And it's going to be in a very different place in a year, and we're going to talk about PWR and Saudi Arabia and the globalization of the sport. Totally. And I think as as much as anyone who regularly listens to the pod would say that, you know, we try our best to be adequately critical of, of everyone and everything equally, equally. Mm-hmm. Um, and we certainly don't hold punches um, when it comes to the UPA, but... At the end of the day, all I want is for people to want to sponsor it and want to watch it and want to show up and totally. want to play and enjoy their experience and feel the way I do when I smack a wiffle ball across a court and, you know, it's all it's all good. I just, you know, uh, want to see fairness and, yeah. and equality and I don't transparency. Know, I don't know if you saw this, but ESPN did an Instagram post that said, uh, will pickleball be in the Olympics? And here's why it probably won't. And it details the issues with the global federations and the adoption internationally that needs to occur and the, con- the consolidation of these governing bodies. And it was this really well done kind of like two minute reel that you could take your average American and have them watch it and like understand what is pickleball? Will it be in the Olympics? And I always love to read the comments. Mm-hmm. And the comments just eviscerate pickleball like it's break dancing. Like, <laughs> like they have it on the – like cornhole. They have it on the same kind – or disc golf. Like – like a joke of a sport, no athleticism required. Like this is the perception. And so someone asked me yesterday, hey, what would you change about pickleball if you could change one thing when I was when I was at um, my sponsor's headquarters? And I said, the broadcast. It is so athletic. But sometimes I tune in and it looks like just yeah. like Pong. It looks like yeah. Pong. And you don't hear any of the trash talking. We're 14 feet away from each other. Like yeah, we, have about- a, we have a hockey irreverency going that is just so not captured yeah. on broadcast. Are we just trying to broadcast this like it's tennis? No. That's going to lose because it's not as balletic as tennis. Think about how they capture um, like the 100 meter dash. Mm-hmm. And now imagine if yeah. what the 100 meter dash looked like Looks was cool. a single camera <laughs> 10 feet from the finish line <laughs> and eight people just running towards you. Like a horse race. Yeah. Well, like. The horse races are covered just like the 100 meter dash, yeah. but yeah, like a, a, any race. But what do they actually do? Zoom in on the pl- on the. They have a wire. Cam. Yeah. So there's a wire cam literally going alongside. Mm-hmm. So it's like a perfect photo finish with the actual runners. Yeah. So there's a sport that has evolved with the technology. Of yeah, I just viewership. Totally. I just think if it were broadcast correctly if, if there were if there were a way to bring and there is because we saw this with like the very first mlp we keep we oh, always no. revert back to like the days of your <laughs> talk about like the bloodbath looked amazing <laughs> kansas we need a name for mlp numero uno i just think if the average american saw that for f- footage quality from that first mlp nobody would be like oh this isn't athletic this isn't cool this isn't fun yeah this isn't the next i remember thing. after Pickleball OG, let's call it. Okay. OG MLP. Ooh, that's good. I just came up with that. OG MLP. Oh, perfect. Just what the sport needs. Another acronym. <laughs> awesome work, Kristen. Thanks, kid No. Crushing. Um, crushing. I remember thinking, it's arrived. Here it is. Like, yeah. we did it. And by we, I mean he, they. I don't take any credit. I just mean after that MLP 
finish that Monday night on on CBS, I was like, wow, this sport has landed. Yeah. Here's the future. Yeah. Anyway. So, so in case you missed it. But first. But first. The other, I guess this should be in, in case you missed it, actually. All right, let's go. Let's go. Maccabia. So we're not in the Olympics yet, but we're in the Jewish Olympics. The Maccabi Games have announced pickleball is in, and uh, we deserve at least 2% of the credit. Yeah, that's right. So for those <laughs> of you that don't know, Chris and I actually went to Israel two summers ago. It was uh, – it we exhibited in the Maccabi mm-hmm. Games, mm-hmm. which was really cool. So it was like an audition to be in the Maccabi Games. And people don't know this, but those games are actually the second largest – uh, sporting event in the world. It's only behind the Olympics. Wow. So it's like bigger than the Pan American mm-hmm. Games and everything else. Wow. Mm-hmm. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. And this is the Jewish Olympics for anyone who doesn't yeah, know what I did we're talking that. about. Oh, you did. Yeah. Good job, Kristen. But I don't listen when you, I don't page. listen when you talk. Um, and in case you were wondering, <laughs> it's a joke. Despite the blonde hair, <laughs> Jill is Jewish. Ish. Fun fact. Jew, Ish. No, it's Jewish. Jew dash ish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My mother was not, so technically I am not, but uh, my father was. So in case you missed it. Cathology. Cathology. It sounds like I just sneezed. God bless you. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so in case you missed it, you guys, we hinted at this. You heard it here first that there was an international tour coming on the scene that was going to make some explosive waves. And they did. So the PWR World Tour Series and Raking System which is backed by the Saudi prince Saad bin Mishal Al Saad, officially announced five events over six continents for over $15 million in prize money. Pickleball is going global, y'all. And in fact, I was actually just invited to participate in the China Open December 4th through 8th, which is really exciting. So more info on that later. Um, so why is this important, you guys? I, I, We try not to just like give you news without the subtle context, like the subtle meaning, like why does this matter? And for me, I think this PWR can be a little bit of a kingmaker in terms of who they partner with. And maybe they partner with no one, Um, but they're definitely a threat. They're definitely competition. They're definitely going to motivate these 200 plus signed exclusive UPA players to want to go play here, to want to not miss out on $15 million of prize money. So they had the opportunity to partner with the APP and they didn't. And the reason they didn't, they wanted to, they went to them first. The reason they didn't was because PWR is partnered with Duper and APP is partnered with UTR Sports. For Did we mention PWR stands for Pickleball World Rating? Correct. Ranking. 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 That's why they can be mm-hmm. collabed with duper because duper is a rating they are a ranking correct they're really more of a tour than a ranking correct and app said you know we can't partner with anyone that has a competing rating or ranking system we have utr sports and so app kind of blew that bill up and so my understanding is now pwr is actually talking to the upa which will be super super interesting and that's why i think pwr might have this ability to be like a kingmaker here. Yeah. I mean. Does that make sense? You can have. If UPA partners with America. With but if you've got the world, you've got everyone else. Mm-hmm. Should be um, interesting to see also how they tie that in with Australia and the other kind of global mm-hmm. places. Are they in South America I, yet with this? Or is know. this just Europe and the Middle East? And I know that Asia. The, no, I, I know that the finals are in Peru. So oh, okay, so they um, must be somewhere. But I just think that's a, that was a that was a big miss by the APP because now if APP has to contend with the UPA, who's already international, and now contending with this new Saudi-backed tour, who's partnered with the UPA, and I'm not saying that that partnership is going to happen. I know they're in talks. That's tough. Yeah, it definitely really looked. Tough. At one point, like, oh, well, you know, if UPA dominates in America, but APP is the world, yeah. then yeah. they have a mm-hmm. reason to, you know, claim their throne. But it's going to be tough to sell people on who they are if uh, three years from now the UPA goes freedom and 
they're competing for prize money again. It's just one less thing that they um, they have to hold over their heads. What if I go to China December 4th and get my ass kicked? I know. It's interesting. <laughs> I always think of this this story. I mean, this is very small, small time, but my dad learned darts by himself. Yeah. And then just happened to be in a bar when they were having a tournament. Mm-hmm. And he won the tournament after having never played darts with other people. And yep. I wonder, like, these little silos of – of players in Peru or in India or in Spain. Japan or wherever, and they find their own way to video and watching what it looks like. Will it be how good could they get? And without... will it be stylistically different? Yeah, that's a good question. Like too. badminton players have the best reactions. I think the badminton players are going to be the most terrifying and the against whom to compete. Yeah, badminton players I think have better overheads than tennis ball tennis players. So yeah, what do you guys think about the PWR? Are you excited to watch more pickleball? I know there's not a lot of pickleball on TV ever, right? Or on live streams. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was just going through the uh, schedule for Virginia Beach. It's a way out for, uh, MLP, for MLP, Virginia Beach. but mm-hmm. they're going to be on center court more than grandstand for that one. Let's go. Yeah. So of course, um, they still have gonna... time to change it. <laughs> 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 We're going to get into MLP in just a second. Um, but first, I have two life changing recovery tips. One, zero, zero, and nice to be in orbit. Um, I have to give a huge thank you to Dr. Joe Kishner. Kisner? Kisner. Kisner. Thank you. Kisner. In Aspen, Colorado, when Chris and I were in Aspen, she was like, you've got to go see Dr. Joe. He's helped me so much in my skiing career, my golf career. Like, you have to go see Dr. Joe. And I was like, I saw that guy like two years ago. And he just like presses on a bunch of different parts on my body and then tells me like, oh, yeah, your arm didn't respond really well here. Go buy some ergonomic shoes. And I was like, no, Kristen, like he can't help me. You wanted someone to really push harder on your body. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is called functional medicine, right? He's a functional medicine doctor. It's Yeah, it's a version of muscle activation therapy. Yes, thank you. A muscle activation guy. Yeah. So and basically the premise is when your muscles are uh, disconnected, the nerves are not communicating, they're not firing between the brain and the muscle, yeah. other muscles come and compensate yes. for a, a movement that they shouldn't be. And that's where you have pain because you're kind of – pulling your joints in the wrong direction instead of using the correct muscles at the correct time. So he awakens your brain to like, hey, we have an imbalance here. And then he reactivates the muscles, which again, I hear myself. It sounds a little hokey, a little out there, but you know, it's one of those things where you just, you feel it immediately. So whether you believe it or not, the results are in the in the pudding. And he's really big in the the ergonomic shoes with the wide toe boxes and the um, toe, spacers. toe spacers that mm-hmm. I love. So I see Dr. Joe and I'm just super like, he's not going to help me. And I'm like, I have had the worst Achilles pain for six months. Like I wake up in the morning, it feels like someone's literally punching me in my Achilles. And I'm just like, oh, this is a ticking time bomb. I'm going to Sam Query tear my Achilles. Like I know I'm going to. And he was like, yeah, you're just like not using your toes. Here, I'll show you that you're not using your toes. And he had this thing called a toe pro. It's 69 bucks. Um, and I bought one and it's like. It's kind of like a combination of a ramp and a yeah. pad yeah. made out of foam. So it escalates slightly, but you get that flex in your toes. Exactly. And then you're you're getting a little give. Exactly. And you, 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 you kind of like knead your toes into this like you're a kitty cat making biscuits. Like you can imagine like a cat's little paws like kneading dough. That's what you do with your toes. The next day was the first day in six months I woke up without Achilles pain. And I am now off of any Achilles pain since the day I saw him in Aspen three weeks ago. So, so if crazy. you are in Aspen, Colorado, and you're lucky enough to see Dr. Joe Kisner for any of your issues, go see him. I was a skeptic. I'm a believer. Uh, and if you're into the Toe Pro and looking into like wanting to fix any plantar fasciitis you have or Achilles issue, the website for Toe Pro is hold on. in the description. It's actually humanlocomotion.com. Human and you can buy the emotion. Toe Pro. I'm sorry, I don't have a code. I don't make any money off of this in any capacity. I'm just a huge believer in it. Yeah. No, it makes a lot of sense. It's kind of fun too. You basically just like lean into the wall, resist. It's kind of like a mini Nordic. Yeah. You think about it's it. a Nordic for your feet. Nordic foot curl. Yes. Oh my gosh. They Trademark that. that. 
The other life-changing thing I did it, this past month was I did Focus Shockwave. And I've had a left hamstring issue for like six months. I wake up in the morning, it freaking kills me. And I saw Dr. Kissinger and Sean Weebly in San, San Clemente. They did this Focus Shockwave. It looks like an ultrasound. And he'll have it on like, you know, level seven. And he's coming up your hamstring and it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It gets to the affected tissue the affected muscle, the like the place where you're injured. And the pain on a scale of zero to 10 is like 100. Like you really have to be a masochist to want to do this. I had to ball up my sweatshirt, put it in my mouth. I'm screaming in a doctor's office, an orthopedic <laughs> surgeon's office. Like this is embarrassing. And um, the next day I literally felt like I had a new leg. I have never, ever felt a technology like this. And this it's is crazy. called Focus Shockwave. Whenever I hear Shockwave, I always picture like mouse size like – plates for uh like the the shock for what do they call the ekg like a mini ekg but yeah. like just on your calf like the way i clear. understand <laughs> that's funny <laughs> the way i understand the technology is like you know you get a massage you feel better but like imagine if you could have a massage that literally pen it penetrates your skin that actually gets into the affected tissue at a cellular level so that's okay. my comprehension of how shockwave works hurts like a mother effer yeah Hence, I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> Nor ever will. All right, All right Kristen, we, we had MLP Salt Lake City. That feels like a year ago. Into it. That feels like a year ago. Salt Lake City in Utah. We had back-to-backers. So we decided, you know what? Let's hold off on a pod and just combine them. And now we're going to have like a two-hour pod. No, no. So we're, we're going to, because we have two MLPs kind of breeze through this, but it was the first event with the new team. So we had DJ mm -hmm. Young, Elise Jones, and Jill, new players, as well as Colin Schick, the only original player on the team. Jill played with Colin. They had some great matches. We had some disappointing matches, but overall, I feel like um, I didn't mind the indoor, like no elements, and uh, and I thought the pickler did a really good job of of preparing for it and and building the crowd. The Utah crowd was so into it; they were really rooting for their hometown team, um, and we walked away with a with a taste of vengeance in our mouth. What was your uh, takeaway? Yeah, I think um, I was in a super calm, meditative state the first day of MLP uh, Salt Lake City. I've been doing a lot of meditating, super helpful. And I step on the court and we're playing Yana Gretschkina and, or I'm sorry, Yana Newell and Irina Tereshenko from the SoCal Heart Eights. And I don't even remember what happens the first point. I just remember we play one point and there is a cacophony of noise. Everyone is screaming. People are going wild. Elise is jumping on me. And I'm like, where am I and what is going on? We've played <laughs> one point. Like I was yeah. out of MLP shape. And Does that make sense? Like I was literally like having an out of body experience. And I forgot you're right because it was it was Elise's home event. So she had a pretty good crowd and it yeah. was – pretty loud for that it, very first game. It legit game. took me like, half oh, a game to nice. remember how to play MLP. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was super <laughs> shell shock. I was like shell shock. At one point you tried to go to the other side to serve. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, wait, here. Here, take the ball. <laughs> oh, Where am I? Oh my gosh. But yeah, no, I was getting uh, lots of shoulder bumps and arm punches from uh, from Elise. So uh, yeah, she's a very like uh, football cheer kind yeah. of like jump and shoulder roll. And I'm like a she needs, I'm like a she bag needs of bones. Like, like don't mini hurt me. Mercado to just stand on the corner of the court so they can do a chest <laughs> bump after your points, and you can just like wave and smile. Dr. Cynthia was uh yeah was watching, and uh, if you guys don't know Dr. Cynthia, uh, she is the pickleball doc. You can follow her on Instagram. She's amazing. Has helped me with so many different problems. So she is the on staff um, medical director of MLP at these events, and she was watching us on the live stream, and she came up to me after and said. Jill, you have to tell Elise to stop punching you in the chest. That's like an area we work on on your right arm, your right pec. I thought that was so funny. I was dying laughing. <laughs> totally. I know. You guys know, obviously, Jill is fiery on the court, but she's not a big like physical contact person in general ever. Like if you come up to her Don't and you hugs hug her strangers. like without warning – not a good idea. You know, you just never know what's what's going to happen. So I really think you'd do well in Japan. Just bow. Yes. 
Love that. Love that for me. It's Omida. After we got sort of spoiled in um, Michigan with the line call systems being back, they were like, oh, just kidding. We're not going to really do it again until September. So we had to go through these last two events with the janky line call system. So at least there it existed, but it definitely was not like camera angles, high speed cameras at the right level worm cam. So on the flip side, I would say I think you were like seven and eight in challenges. Did you miss any? I think every single challenge went your direction. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. I, I didn't have an overrule once on any of my calls. Yeah. No. And uh, that wasn't the only thing you oh, were. Oh, and, uh, and I challenged successfully, I think three out of four. That's what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You were either challenged or you challenged and you got it right like seven out of eight times. Yeah. And it wasn't just the like call stands. We didn't have enough video evidence. It was like ball was out. Yeah. There was one time an announcer said, one of my calls was deemed out because of inconclusive evidence, but that wasn't accurate, actually. There was, however, a call in the Night Owls match that couldn't be overturned. The MLP gray boat poster be- was in the Because way. the MLP sign was in the way. And I was like, yeah. oh, my God. Like, Why they, they knew these? that was an issue. Why do they have those there? And that was weird. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, no issues with calls. Just yeah. that, just that uh, so, s- scoreboard. So, oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, net sign. So, uh, yeah, you were uh, – Given the stats after, and yeah. we found out that Jill was the number one in player impact for challenger players. So that is not only awesome, but it's the first time a female has had that uh, rating, which is interesting on an o- a whole other level. Yeah, that was cool. That was, I was going to say that was the first time I've had that. I think it was this. Oh, I've been number one before in women. In females. In female, yeah. But not overall. Yeah. Interesting. So that was cool. And yeah. that was nice too, because it's not like I won all my matches either. In Salt Lake City. Right. So, so how do it, they it, measure that? So they're able to disentangle like your individual performance from that of like your performance. Your actual as like, a team. shots hit. Yeah. So they look at your shots hits basically like um, are when you touch the ball in a point. Is it, is it a, a higher? Yeah. Is it a positive outcome? Is it a higher? It's almost like counting cards. Like, oh, another face card came out. Let's minus one. Oh, another low card came out. Let's plus one. So it's like, oh, you hit it in the net. Minus one. Oh, you hit it in the court. Plus one. That kind of thing. I have no idea. We'll have to find out. Okay. Anyway, number one. Um, and uh, thank you also to Britain from the kitchen Kaysville, yeah. right next door to the pickler, who uh, allowed us to do some practice matches. Cool spot, super different, cool spot, different vibe than the pickler, but super clean place. I think they have like six courts, super friendly. Definitely check it out if you're in the uh, North Salt And Lake I think City they're area. looking to franchise. So if you guys are interested in franchise opportunities, if your yeah. dream is to own good a facility, management is the hardest part of franchising. Um, we definitely recommend reaching location. out to Britain from the Kitchen Kaysville. Totally, yeah. yeah, or reach out to us and we'll connect you. Yep. Um, so MLP Kansas, it was hot and it was outdoors. I remember nothing it? from MLP Kansas. <laughs> I was blacked out for that. For I got sick. Not the C word sick. It was not COVID, but it was a different C word. It was a cold. Yeah, it started out really strong. Like you guys were up like 19-10 against your first women's match. Ended up winning now in 25-16. Mm-hmm. Redem- like, redemption, right, redemption. The area is ready to crash, ready to go. And then a uh, couple of really close calls came down in that mixed match and ended up going into a dream breaker which we uh we lost every single dream breaker we've played yep so yep so we we uh, made some changes to the roster after mlp kansas so dj young is no longer on our team he was waived um and we've added lefty lefty martin emmerich who played great he was a substitute for the chicago slice jack monroe was out and he just did he did he really up. really well he mm-hmm. showed up uh martin and i have played a couple tournaments together this year i can't say enough good things about martin's game his attitude him as a person uh, i love tammy and his family and his beautiful daughter gabby so i think he's just going to be exactly what the uh yeah what the what it'll the, be funny when you guys needs. play chicago again and they have <laughs> their normal guy jack sock your partner from san Clemente. And when you guys win, they'll be like, Jack Sock oh, or Jack shoot. Monroe? Oh. <laughs> I was a little Jack confused. Monroe. This just so in, Jack Jacks. Sock has been traded to challenger for Jack Monroe. <laughs> you funny. heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, Jack Sock is partners with a different member of Bay Area Breakers. Um, but yeah, it'll be funny when you play Chicago. If you guys beat them, they'll be like, oh, we should have just, you know, swapped lefties. <laughs> yeah, Jack, Jack Monroe, Monroe, you should have just stayed Martin home. Emmerich. Your team did your team did so well, uh, so well without you. I'm just kidding. So many, uh, so many lefties in Challenger. Um, thank you so much to Dr. Cynthia and the whole MLP staff. Uh, these yeah. events are just not easy to put on. So grateful for the opportunities, truly. Absolutely. Um, and uh, do you want to talk about the waiver? Any any uh, details about I mean, that? Just, I put a few thoughts. Yeah, I mean, there's down below, so but so like many like trades and roster changes. It makes falling in love with what I think is the best format in pickleball really tough. Like I read this uh, YouTube comment by Zaf seventy eight nineteen. I thought it was interesting. He said, "I plead guilty to being a pickleball junkie, but I can't keep track of who's on which MLP team without a scorecard." The rosters change frequently. They aren't even located in cities, so it's not like rooting for the Cubs in Chicago. What do I watch for? What I do watch for are the matchups because I follow many of the players and I'm curious about how they fare against each other, though even trying to is a brain teaser as the games might be broadcast on one of four or five different channels depending on the time of day. And another friend of ours who's very into pickleball and very knowledgeable was saying how they were struggling to figure out where is the scores and when is it playing and what's the schedule. It is it is definitely a lot. I mean, I basically am now doing this for my living and I have like four different spreadsheets I have to refer to, like the original draft results, the new draft results, made changes, this tournament, what days are we playing, what time, who's our opponent, have we played them before? It's definitely, it's definitely not easy. He said, I end up going to Instagram and clicking on the MLP team pages to get score updates and viewing instructions. Yikes. Yeah, well, at least that's a reason for people to follow Breakers MLP. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was interesting that uh, the bouncers changed both their women, and now they have Susanna and Emily back together again. And Vegas changed both their men, and they now have Rafa and Blaine. So both teams inheriting a Richie player. And remind everyone and why we're seeing these changes, like what's at stake, what are we fighting yeah, for? Yeah, they're all Talk trying to get playoffs. number one into the top six so they get into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And the top four will end up in premiere. Nice. And there's no demotion. No demotion. No relegation, I just promotion. They're going to sell the two teams that already bailed plus four more teams, theoretically. And um, or Or they're just going to have a smaller challenger that eventually just all becomes one one league but interesting that of richie's two teams right because he's a partial owner in our team bay area breakers as well as cal they both only have one original member mm. we've fallen chick and they have amanda hendry mm. got it so not afraid of making the shake up um but yeah uh florida made some changes they're not usually a team that does a whole lot but uh they added some uh, big lefty energy too oh yeah Donald Young. Oh, Donald Young. Tennis star. Yeah. Oh. So our so. coach, Scott, you guys, if you missed our last episode, um, I, I think the comments on it were like it was some of some, yeah, some of we the best stuff be we've good. done. Yes. With Scott Crandall. So Scott and I are actually going to be doing a new series together. I haven't named it yet. Oh, yeah. We can get the pod listeners to name it. Yeah. You guys tell me what you want, want, to, want us to call it. It's going to be really informal conversations with Scott. And uh, I've got some ideas, like maybe it should be the pro's pro, right? No? Yep. Yes, yep. no. I think that was your idea. <laughs> I stole it. I stole it. Um, <laughs> All good. One brain yep. thought stream. Yep. It uh, could be an iteration on the yeah. why you suck pickleball. I was ball. like, you don't know Jack with Scott. <laughs> oh, I like that. You don't know Jack with Jill and Scott. Um, so Scott made an interesting point after Zane – Nasty Nelson, Hayden, Patrick Quinn, and MLP. <laughs> Why is a nasty Nelson net cord not a reserve? Yeah. That's that, a great question. It's definitely like a chicken or the egg. And in golf, I'm usually pretty good at understanding why a rule exists because with the absence of that rule, what would be able to happen? What would occur? And I think in this case, if you think about serving, if it hits the net cord and then it drops in the kitchen – it did not land in the diagonal adjacent box it's supposed to, right? 
If it lands out of the court, it also did not land in that box. If a human being gets in the way of it, you yeah. cannot conclusively say where it would have landed. That's a great point. Just like if you go Ernie mm. and their defense of the Ernie is a body bag, is mm. a tag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because we can't conclusively say where the ball would land it. Just like if you try and hop out of the way and it nicks your foot, we can't conclusively say that it would have yeah. landed out. Um. At MLP Salt Lake, I warmed up with Colin Schick, my partner, against Riley Newman and Andrea Coop. And we were beating up on them pretty badly. And I think Riley's hamstring was bothering him because he ended up not playing a second match and just stretching on the court. Um, and he plays that Pro XR paddle. And it was the first time I'd played Riley in years. And I was like, God, he just like does not hit the ball very hard. Like, I can't believe how not hard this guy hits the ball. Literally, two points later, I float one in that, like, perfect strike zone where, like, Riley actually hits the ball harder when it's lower because he's got that grip, right? So he, like, lags it and slaps it, and he hit me in the forearm so hard I couldn't wear my pro band arm bandit. True story. (laughs) True story. That is karmic balance. Shik and I won the match. But Riley won the The hard-hitting war. (laughs) (laughs) So funny. Oh, my gosh. Um, Some MLP drama, Kristen, that I think we should touch on. More drama? Even though I feel like it's kind of like been beaten like a dead horse. Have we talked about – we did talk a little bit about Colin John's open. No, we haven't. We really haven't? Well, I mean, we talked about it for like two seconds. Do you want to talk about it? Look, this is to me the put a button in it. Colin – had some texts leaked against his will. That's not cool. Colin aired some grievances. One should be able to air grievances. One should be able to complain and be constructive Mm -hmm. and have thoughts. That's not cool. But if you are going to air grievances, probably have some constructive points to it, some fixes. Number two, uh, it's not an excuse for his actual actions on the court. And I think it's just a, a very unlucky timing or perhaps perfect timing for whoever leaked it um, on the heels of it very much looking like not a lot of effort going out on the John's behalf. Mm -hmm. Now, in the past, they um, have not been on a team together Mm. um, and Ben has done pretty well in MLP. So a lot of people also criticizing like, wait, so now he's not winning because he's got his normal partner on the team and he's still not enough. Well, the one, the one thing, thing, too, I wanted to touch on with this was apparently uh, one of the last MLPs, Colin, could be heard very audibly saying, I can't win with her. How mm-hmm. can I win with her? I can't. And that was in reference to his partner, Andrea Coop. And that's inexcusable to yeah. me because she's a world-class player, so it's just not true. Um, and two, you know, blaming your partner audibly – with cameras and fans it's just a really childish look yeah and at the end of the day they spent so much money on ben they basically waited till the last round so it's like they got one first round pick and three fourth round picks so it's not really the women's fault if they're not winning they shouldn't be winning right like anna bright is a first round female pick Mm -hmm. and she's got one fourth Mm -hmm. round pick theoretically to pick up that's very different than getting two people at the end of the pa- end of the pack, and that's no knock on those specific two women. That's just literally draft results. So it is a side effect of how they decided to do the, yep. the draft yep. this year. And and the last thing I will say is it's it's interesting because tanking has been something I wanted to discuss on the pod. We discuss Since it April. all the time. Yeah. yeah. Since April, it's been on our pod notes and I just keep pushing it and it's finally like, oh, now we have to talk about tanking. But like, it's not so much of a thing in golf because you're playing by yourself. I think it's more obvious in a in a team sport because mm. sometimes it's like one player affecting their their team and then it brings them both down. But then you're also playing against a person. So then they're like, are you trying? Now it's awkward for me if I'm out here competing like I normally would and you're just sort of going through the motions. But what what do you think tanking is and is it a controllable thing? Or oh, do you think people sure. just get caught up in a, like I think tanking blackout. Yeah, no, I think tanking occurs when it's just too painful to care. Mm, a self-defense mechanism. It's a total self-defense mechanism. It's like 
I could care and be hurt mm-hmm. or I can be so cool, so above all of this. This is so beneath me mm-hmm. that I'm not going to care. I'm not going to try and it's not going to hurt me. I think that's tanking. And to, so that's really mentally weak to me. Right. It, I would say like it's it's great to to be a good sport when you're winning, but it only matters when you're losing. It's great to be a good partner when you're winning, but it or maybe, only matters or maybe, when you're not. You know, maybe it's an act of defiance. You know, I've never really considered that until this moment. You know, um, you know, Zane uh, purposefully served with a spin serve against Christian Alshon like six tournaments ago because he – not because he wanted to cheat, not because he doesn't respect Christian, because he wanted to prove a point that – the referees kind of aren't really watching, right? Like he wanted to prove a point like, I bet if I do this, I'll kind of get away with it. Let's see. Let's find out. My point is, I think sometimes people can do certain things in acts of defiance. And maybe Colin and others who are tanking feel like that's all they can do if the powers to be are not listening. I don't I don't know if that's the case. Yeah, I mean. I don't even know if I'm making I'd lo- sense. I'd love to think it was some kind of <laughs> Silver lining, but um, paddle talk, Kristen. I have been been texting with Carl Schmitz, director of equipment for USA Pickleball, asking where the 18 month D list list is. So, for those of you that do not know, um, when certain paddles are deemed out of spec by USA Pickleball, they can, at USA Pickleball's discretion, receive an 18 month D listing notice. And so you've heard us talk about on the podcast before, like I've heard this paddle has been given their notice. I've heard this yeah. paddle's been given their notice. Yeah. And so I, I want to see the list. was having a conversation uh-huh. yesterday about why that's so important. I mean, so important. We can't have paddle companies out there w- w- putting R&D into their paddles afraid that at any moment they won't be able to sell them. Like that is fair. Totally fair. How is Yola different? Well, I think what USA Pickleball would say is you submitted the incorrect paddles and what you produced do not match what we approve. So you don't get some 18-month runway for failing to manufacture the correct paddles. So I I think that's what they would say. But my point is I want to see this this mythical 18-month D-list list. So Carl's response was, we do not comment on any manufacturers under investigation. So naturally, your girl Jilly B writes back, if they've been given notice, where can I find the list? Not under investigation. That's not what I'm talking about. Given notice. His response. We'll likely publish that list on the equipment.usapickleball.org page. As part of the stakeholder input process, we will solicit inputs from players on what you would consider the upper threshold should be. Given the number may seem arbitrary to most, what would you consider the fastest legal paddle to be that you've experienced or witnessed? So... That was neither here nor there. That wasn't Wait, he my... asked you or you asked him? No, he asked me. Huh. But that was like neither here nor there. Like I appreciate that he's soliciting my input on how fast I think paddles should be. Um, but it's neither here nor there. I want to see the list. And, and, and as a consumer, don't you want to see the list? Like if you're buying yeah. a paddle that they literally are not going to manufacture again because the technology has been deemed like, hey, you can't produce that anymore. <laughs> Proton. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Don't you want to know that? No, it's fair. And when they did come down with uh, the Yola thing that was like at the header, right? Which again, I know is different. But then we heard about the Ripple, the um, Oni, mm-hmm. Vatic, that o- is. Omni, Oni. Where was Oni? Oni? But it's delisted now. <laughs> it's nothing. Point being, an absence from a list is not the same as check out this list of things you can't play. Sure. Right? And for the sake of the sanity and the sanctity of the sport, I think that it does make sense. And I think Zane has brought up on his podcast, The Pickle Paw with Thomas Shields, a really great question multiple times. For over a year, Zane has been advocating for restrictions around the ball, not the paddle. Slow the ball down. So Kristen, talk to us about what golf has done. I mean, yeah. Do you like this notion of slowing the ball down? Better than paddles. What's interesting for golf is that the highest swing speed players gain the most and lose the most as this ball is restricted. So ironically, yes, your average golfer swings like 85 miles an hour and the average pro swings like 112. 
but so the, the, the slower swing speed theoretically needs more help, but they get so much more out of the, out of the equipment. I think Mm. the uh, the actual clubs versus the ball and they're going to lose percentage wise much less. Like they might lose five yards on their drive, but the pros will lose like 30 yards on their drive, which I think is like, yeah, get over it. Interesting. It's really a um, golf course uh, dependent problem because golf takes so much space as it is, as these equipment manufacturers create the situation where the ball goes so far these golf courses are unusable. And, you know, we talk about court shortage. What if you had to find an extra 100 acres in the woods yeah. every time you wanted to build a new pickleball court? So, so if we wanted... Um, in, the case of, in the case of pickleball, to circle mm-hmm. back, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I think as long as you could create a ball that didn't sacrifice the feel. When I play those, um, those indoor pickleballs, oh boy. they feel feel so different it yeah. really to me degrades from my experience i don't know uh, if you'd so if they be, could find uh, a happy medium i, would I think you would it. just make bigger holes more air going into the ball interesting like and less still be as like less as holes bigger holes mm-hmm. yeah um but yeah definitely would be an easier thing to control <laughs> yeah i think so, it's a great idea i think it's a great idea or even a pro ball right yeah Like you can lose your eye at the amateur level, but not at the pro level. Kristen, do you want to do big props and big flops? And then we will end with one of my all-time favorite Dear Jilly Bees about how to stop losing to worse players. Amazing. All right, let's start with the big props. I really got to hand it to Rafa for something he did off the pickleball court. He was throwing buckets from the upper deck at Salt Lake City in the pickler in the back of the player area. They had a basketball court. And from the upper deck, I witnessed him make not one but two baskets from and like 55 feet. Did you know that I was on the lower deck and witnessed it as well? Yes, I think I was with you. He is by far and away the most impressive basketball come pickleball player I've ever seen in my life. Rafa Hewitt. You I think mean, you freak think, of nature okay. athlete Rafa Hewitt versus Riley Newman on a basketball court. Rafa was just pulling off these massive, massive shots. Like he was past half court, looked me in the eye, kind of did this like no look fadeaway shot and made it and ran off without even really like watching it go it in. Was it just, was so cool. Yep, it's in run off. Yeah, that's great. That's when people like uh, lean over to pick up their tee after they smash a drive. Like, exactly, yeah, it's in the fairway. Um, number two, uh, Ben John's acing Crandall on the ping pong table Ooh. right next door. I, I think he like ace served him nine out of 10 <laughs> at one point. And Crandall's actually Crandall's pretty good ping pong at ping pong. So even more impressed. Um, got to hand it to Millie. Millie, uh, Millie stepped Rain. in on loan, um, and played with, uh, the Orlando Slice Orlando uh, squeeze. Orlando oh squeeze. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I always want to do that. I don't know why. I think it's because it's an orange slice. So they anyway, had a, so they, had they, a, they, they won with the subs. And uh, I really did think they deserve some props. So there was a match at MLP with three subs. Yeah. Millie Rain, Spencer Smith, and Roscoe Bellamy. And the subs showed out, you guys. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just goes to show. Anyone anyone can uh, can do it. MLP is the the master of that, but uh, you gotta you gotta bring it and you've gotta make balls. So props to them, and uh, and also wanted to throw a shout out to uh, not only the sub Martin Emmerich, but Chicago Slice in general, turning their season around. They've still only played seven matches compared to Cal, who have, who have played double that. Um, but they were really looking. Um, Bleak there going into this event, and they won. Uh, they went three and one, grabbed nine points in Kansas. So it'll be interesting to see if they can keep that momentum going. Uh, the, the flops, just briefly. I mean, we already we already talked tackled the whole tanking, the the Colin thing, but um, really just always hard to find the flops. I hate I hate to focus on the negative. Just call it big props, Kristen. Just 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 say okay, you want to have a. Props. You know, 
a four minute shout out on every pod where you just spread love and joy. Come on. Just okay. call, it, call it like it is. All right. You heard it here. <laughs> the last flop. The final flop. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly have not had enough ketone today because I I'm have all over the place. I have. I ketoned up. Looking for clarity? Ketone IQ can help you feel sharper, more focused, and ready to take on any task. Visit ketone.com slash B for 30% off your first subscription order and unlock the benefits of drinkable ketones, allowing you to return to an ancient source of energy on demand. According to PubMed, 87% of people see an improvement in brain network stability after drinking Ketone IQ. Proven to support endurance and recovery, ketone supplements are trusted by the world's top performers, from Navy SEALs and Tour de France cyclists to pro athletes across major sports. Ketone IQ ships free inside the U.S., and it's backed by a 60-day money-back guarantee. So ride the ketone wave risk-free at ketone.com slash B for 30% off your first order. And they just came out with a ketone plus caffeine product. Super exciting. Super exciting. So ketone up. So dear Jilly B, why do I lose to worse players but beat better players? Such a good question. This is such a great question. It happens to everyone, as Kristen just said. I watched it firsthand. My sister, Natalie, played at a Kappa tournament, California Association of Pickleball Amateurs. I made that up. I thought that was a sorority you were in. in I was a Kappa. Yes, I was. (laughs) Thank you. This is C-A-P-A, Kristen, not K-A-P-P-A. Oh, well, I definitely like the K better. Um, So I just watched this with my sister. She did a a really interesting format. She played nine matches, all one game to 11, win by one. She also did a two-hour warm-up. In the morning, so yes, my sister played eight hours of pickleball in one day. Her little toesies were cramping in her last three matches. Um, I could Needs only the I could only watch really the first five or six matches before having to evacuate for my mental sanity because she was playing these just beautiful points against the players who were her level or better, who were dinking and playing what you would call real pickleball. And then she got on a court against players who were a little bit more wild, a little more unorthodox, and she got killed. And it was really hard to watch. And then we received this Dear Jilly Bee, and I think it's such an important and a relevant topic. And here is what I would say. You have to learn how to find the calm in the madness. You cannot let anyone dictate your pace of play. One wild person on a court has the ability to bring the entire group to his or her level down a notch. Only if you allow it though. Only if you allow it. Do not play on anyone else's terms but your own. If they're speeding up at stupid times, you can either punish it or simply reset it. If they refuse to play real pickleball and they're speeding up crazy shots, you have to learn how to duck. This is on you. It's not on them. That's good news. It means it's in your control. Kristen, would you add anything there? Yeah. Um, I mean, it always comes back to the, 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 the thing about paddles getting too heavy too fast is that it's harder to duck. So with these mm-hmm. wild players, it becomes more tagging and less ducking. Sure. But um, I am master of the duck so much so that uh, when we were at the waterfall, we were playing smash ball and I kept trying to let him go because it's like <laughs> such an instinct that if wait, I see a shoulder high, I let it fly. To, to, to be clear, not everyone knows like, what you mean when you wait, said when I was what? at the waterfall, you were at a physical waterfall yeah, here in yeah. uh, Tequila Canyon. Well, it's funny Canyon because when I got desert? invited to come to the waterfall, my first instinct was the duper waterfall. Well, when you just said that and glossed over that, <laughs> I thought you were talking about the waterfall duper yeah. tournament. So, so we you, so these so just paddles. To be clear, you're actually talking about an, a waterfall a you went to last week waterfall. and you brought smash ball paddles. Yeah. Okay. And smash ball is a lot. I just sort of like line drive, hit it uh, as hard as you can and just keep smacking it, I guess. I've never quite understood the point of the game, but I kept leaving balls because I was like, oh, was those, are not, those are not balls you hit. <laughs> They're shoulder high. I let those go. Um, but yeah, we had this also happen the other day where I had a, a lob king and, uh, mm-hmm. and it is sometimes frustrating when you work your way back to neutral, all four players at the net. And then you're like, wait, lob right now. And you yeah. missed it again. So this, pro- this player can come in the form of, of a crazy nonstop lobber. It can come in the form of, I'm going to speed up 
every uh, bounce speed up I can. It can come in the form of I'm going to drive every fifth or seventh from the midcourt that I can. Yeah. Uh, and it is completely within your control to dictate the pace of play it's that a, you're willing to play yeah, at. It's a little bit like training a, a cat or dog. Mm -hmm. Like if you give them the negative feedback of, oh, that didn't work, they will stop doing it. 100%. Yeah. So good luck out, out there to you. And, and um being able to dictate the style and the mm -hmm. pace of the game. I think it's a it's a skill worth building and totally. it's something that you can always go to the court with the uh the goal of, you know. It's, yeah. it's it's always important not to just have goals that are just like I want to win. And, and don't forget, this is why we say practice a third below your level, a third at your level and totally. a third above your level. There is value at every one of those levels for you when you step on the court. Absolutely. You guys, do not forget, what is our mantra? Pickleball is joy. Don't let anyone tell you differently. We, we out. out. This Pickleball Life is a Tomahawk production. 100% organic, self-made, and homegrown. Music by K-Dubs. Editing by K-Dubs and Joey B. Check out pbgods.com and use code PBLIFERS for 10% off your next order. Do you have a question for Jilly B? Email us at thispblife at gmail.com to be included in future episodes. Don't forget to click subscribe. This Pickleball Life.